Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name's Jade and today we're going to be talking about Venus fly tracks. A quick brief on Venus fly tracks. So these plants come uh, originally from the uh, North and South Carolina and they live in the bogs there. So they are a bog plant. Where they originally come from, there's not a lot of nutrients in the soil. Through evolution, they have become to eat insects. They do get nutrients from the soil and they do photosynthesize still, but they just get that extra little bit of a boost from the insects that they catch. Okay, so now just a quick brief on how to look after your Venus flytrap. So you may have just bought one or you may be thinking about getting one and this is just going to be a, a very brief video on how to care for your Venus flytrap. So for your Venus flytrap, you want to keep them in plastic um, pots. So you don't want to have them in terracotta or any kind of fancy pots because it is possible for minerals to seep into the soil from those pots. So you want a nice plastic pot with good drainage. As you can see, there's literally water dripping from this plant. Um, these are just some seeds that uh, seedlings that I started growing last year uh, from seed and they're just about ready to find some new homes. The soil. So as I mentioned before, they don't want any nutrients in the soil. So using a standard compost that you find in the garden centre will not work for these plants. There's too many minerals and they will then just die. <laughs> what you want to find is a sphagnum peat moss, which has no nutrients in the soil and it's slightly on the acidic side. Now with that, you do want some good drainage. So you can use either perlite, which you can find in most garden centres, or you can use sand, but it needs to be a sharp sand, and I prefer using perlite. The ratio mix that I do is I do um, one to one. So however much peat moss I put in, I put that much perlite. So if you think one cup of moss, not moss, but peat moss, and then one cup of perlite, and that is a good mix. Generally for any kind of carnivorous plants, that's what I, what I use watering so for your watering you do want to give these plants a lot of water as i said before they lived in bogs and well that's where they originally come from so you want to think about what kind of conditions they would have there so if you're one of those people that likes to give your plants plenty of water all the time and end up with dying plants all around you these are for you you have to keep them well i mean i keep mine sat in water through the growing period so sort of from now which is Mar the end of March I'm going to keep these sat in water and I won't let them dry out. The kind of water that you use is also important so because our tap water tends to have minerals and bits and pieces added as, as well as um, bottled water you can't use those types of water. So rainwater is the ideal water to use but you can also use distilled water or if you happen to have access to reverse osmosis <laughs> reverse osmosis water that would work too just remember that you don't want to water from the tap you can get away with a sneaky little if you're in desperate need of water which i sometimes am so i do sometimes boil the kettle and um, with clean water and then I let it cool and I use that water. I try not to use that very often but if you're in desperate need of water and there's nothing else that's one option that you can use. These plants enjoy a lot of sun so if you've got a really sunny windowsill they will thrive there. They don't mind having bright sunlight for 12 hours of the day. They would really much prefer it to be honest. But if you do have a problem and there isn't a, that much light in your house and you have say only four five hours of bright sunlight these will they will still live they will still be absolutely fine and they will still grow in that but obviously if you can give them more bright light then do if you have a really sunny day and you want to stick them outside for for the day they will be absolutely fine with that and they'll probably catch some bugs as well so It'll do, them, it'll do them good to sit outside and 
when the temperatures are really quite high. So you can feed these plants yourself. If you've got children and they want to go and find some bugs to feed the plants, then that's absolutely fine. They do prefer it if, there's, if the bugs that you feed them or the flies that you feed them are alive still because it triggers the, uh, the tiny hairs on the leaves which make them close. So there's three, three little hairs inside the traps on either side and if you touch one of the hairs twice or you touch two of the, uh, the hairs then the trap will close and it will catch whatever you've put in there. Like I said before they don't need like they don't desperately need the bugs but you know you can you can feed them if you want or just stick them outside or just hope that there's a few flies buzzing around in the house and they'll catch them for you. If you do feed the traps yourself try not to feed the same trap more than once. When they've had a few flies over time that trap will then die because it's it's used up all its energy and it will then just be done. So try to you know maybe give a few different traps the the insects that you catch or you know if you um if you find dead flies or anything you can use them as well but try not to feed the same trap more than once maybe twice dormancy so these plants do go dormant so don't worry if we're if you're in winter and you're watching this and you're like why is my venus fly trap looking dead that's absolutely fine they need a rest period, they need to save their energy to put all their energy into next year's growth. So when you have a Venus fire trap and it starts to get maybe to November, December, I am talking for the UK, it might be different elsewhere, I don't know. Um, so if you're in the UK and it's November, December time and they've slowed down on growing, what you want to do is just slow down the watering. You may also move it to a cooler spot in the house or if you've got a cold frame or a greenhouse outside then put them out there. When they are fully dormant, so proper mid-winter time, sort of January time, you don't want to be giving them water really at all. They like to be a little bit damp but they can take one watering and that will last them for about a month. So if you have your Venus fire traps in dormancy just remember to check on them every now and again and give them a little bit of water if they need it but they don't want to be sat in water like in the summer months. Venus flytraps can really fill their pot so when it gets to a point that they're really spilling over the sides of the pot you might want to then think about repotting. For now these will be fine in here for probably this season and then a good time to repot them is when they're dormant because then you're not disturbing the traps, it's completely asleep and you can pot it up into a bigger pot. For the general maintenance of this plant, I would say that there isn't very much that you can that you need to do. The one thing that you can do is that when a trap has died, so when it starts to turn black, just trim it off. So just get some little scissors or some, some very small secateurs and just go in and trim off the trap. And that's really it. They kind of look after themselves. They're, they're, very, they're a very interesting plant, especially if you have children or if you just like a plant that does something. These are the plants for you. Uh, I would say not to trigger the traps yourself too much, but you can do it once or twice. I'm sure it'll be fine with it. <laughs> like all plants, these plants do flower. Now with Venus fly traps, it's entirely up to you if you keep the flower or you chop it off. A lot of people choose to chop the flower stalks off because a lot of the energy then goes into the flower. You want your plant to be nice and healthy for the rest of the year. So personally, I would trim any flower heads off. Unless you're an expert and you, you know, really want to have a go at pollinating the flowers and getting seed yourself, <clears throat> there's no point in keeping the flowers. They're nothing special and you want as many traps as possible and a nice healthy plant. So that's pretty much it for a Venus flytrap. They're really interesting plants. I know you can't really see them because these are really tiny, but they are they're very, very interesting to watch and to, and to own and grow yourself. And if you do manage to grow them, then there's a whole world of carnivorous plants out there that you can then start looking into. And I would recommend to anyone that, especially if you've got children, to grow these plants. They're not as hard as they seem, you just need to know how to do it right. 
I hope that's helped you decide if you want to grow Venus flytraps. If there's any questions, then please put them in the comments. Or if you've got anything else to say about Venus flytraps or any videos you'd like me to cover in the future, then just bob, bob it in the comments below. As always, if you could give this video a like and subscribe if you want to. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Nice and quick and easy, Venus flytraps. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and uh, I'll see you next time.